Hi guys, good to see you. You well? Third week of lockdown, second week of lockdown. I'm getting sort of a bit confused now, uh, but I hope you're really good. It was good to see loads of you on the Zoom call last night. Uh, it's great seeing you. If um, if you're watching this and you're not connected with us via Zoom, uh, every Tuesday at six we do a children's Zoom with me and Robin and a load of you guys. It's great seeing you and chatting through and chatting what you're up to. Um, Hopefully my dishwasher won't make a load of noise in the background, but if you hear some gurgling, that's what it is. So uh, we're carrying on. Uh, Moses and Aaron have been told now by Pharaoh to leave and to go. Uh, so they're off. 20,000 Egyptians under the sea is what this week's talk. And it's on page 139 of the Action Bible. The next day, the great exodus from Egypt is underway. Joyfully, the Hebrews marched towards the land God promised would be their home. During the day, a bright cloud guides them, and at night, a pillar of fire leads them. But in their rush for freedom, they didn't forget to take with them the body of their ancestor, Joseph. He was a great man in Egypt, but he wanted to be buried in his own land, so they, they carried his coffin. After several days of travel, the Hebrews reached the Red Sea, the sea in front of us and the mountains all around. What will we do now? What was Moses thinking? Moses has brought them to the sea. They can't go either side up and down the mountains and they can't go over this huge deep lake called the Red Sea. The only way is to go back. What are they going to do? But meanwhile, back in Pharaoh's palace, it was a mistake to let those Hebrew slaves go. What will, who will do our work for us? It isn't too late, look, said one of his advisors. They're wandering around like lost sheep. The route they took will lead them into this trap. So much for their brilliant and powerful God. Muster every chariot in my army. Those slaves will soon be back at work making more bricks than ever. So Pharaoh's army soon approached the camp of the Hebrews. Look, here comes the Egyptian army. We can't escape them now. It's your fault, Moses. We're trapped. We're the, gra we're the graves in Egypt. Not good enough. You had to bring us to the desert to die. The people were not happy. Pharaoh and his army looked at the Hebrews' camp beside the Red Sea. Trapped, just as I said. Good, they'll soon see who is mightier, Pharaoh or the God they worship. At the same time in the Hebrew camp, I'd rather be an Egyptian slave than die this way. Don't be afraid. After today, you will never see these Egyptians again. The Lord will fight on our behalf. Just be still and see what God is going to do. As Moses spoke, the cloud that leads them moves to the back of the camp. Look, the camp is hiding us from the, the cloud, not the camp. The cloud is hiding us from the Egyptians. Then Moses holds out his staff towards the Red Sea, as God told him to do. A strong east wind blows all night and rolls back the water of the sea. You see, it's rolled the water back, so there's a passageway through. Awed by the sight, the Hebrews rushed joyfully across the path of the sea. It's not until the next morning that the cloud clears from in front of the Egyptians. When Pharaoh sees that the Hebrews are getting away, he orders his army to charge after them. The Egyptians race out across the sea floor, but sand clogs their chariot wheels. Then Moses puts out his hand again. Suddenly the wind dies and the waters roll back into place. All of Pharaoh's men are caught in the rushing sea. Safe on the other side, the Hebrews look back. God has saved us. I'll never doubt again that God has sent Moses to save us from the Egyptians. Joyfully, the Hebrews celebrate God's deliverance. The tribes descended from Jacob, or from Israel, are a free people, ready to form a new nation. Miriam, Moses' sister, leads the women's chorus singing praises to God. The Lord is my strength and song. He is my salvation. Sing to the Lord. Isn't that great? They managed to escape the Egyptians and they were free to go into God's land. And God had shown them how brilliant he is and that he's got everything sorted and planned for them. But if you look on the next page, you can see next week's The Complaining Begins. Because I think the people complain and they soon forget what God has done for them. And that's often what people do. They forget what God's done and start back complaining. But uh, we'll find out about that next week. 
I'll see you later. Bye.